Welcome to Stacktastic, the weekly web show for the avid comic book reader and those who aspire to become so. Now, as you all know by now, comics have conquered the silver screen. We have locked that down. So what's next? Television. That's right, no screen is too small in our quest for entertainment domination. Birds of Prey? That was just to get the mainstream's defenses down, playing dumb. Although, for some moments, that show did shine. But then there was Smallville, and then Arrow. But we can do better than the CW. Like AMC's The Walking Dead, a cultural phenomenon. But how about the big leagues, like NBC or ABC? Yes, it was just recently announced that Ani Press's The Sixth Gun is being aggressively developed for NBC. And of course, Disney is currently shooting the pilot for the S.H.I.E.L.D. TV series they hope to air on ABC. Today I'm going to give you the inside track on both shows, plus, as always, my recommendations for what comics to pick up or download this week. Let's get started. Yeah, I'm already reading The Sixth Gun. In fact, I'm all caught up, which means I get to share in the joys of frustration, wondering when the hell the next issue is going to come out. Yes, apparently Ani Press can get a comic book on TV, but not the shelf at Midtown Comics. However, I'll let you in on a little secret. I only picked up The Sixth Gun because two New York Comic Cons ago, an editor at Ani told me on the download that NBC Universal was developing it for their sci-fi channel. So I snapped up all the available trades and, to my delight, devoured them by the end of the weekend. Apparently, Colin Bunn just can't write when it's on Marvel's dime because the Sixth Gun might be damned, but the series itself is damn good. Can a network produce a damn good dramatic TV series, though? Every awards show says no. But then the Sixth Gun is being spearheaded by Carlton Cuse, one of the main writers and producers on Lost. Yeah, let's just hope Damon Lindelof is to blame for all that show's problems and he was holding Coos back. Coos is also behind A&E's modernized prequel to Psycho, Bates Motel, which premieres March 18th. If that goes well, the Sixth Gun should pick up some serious buzz. One thing I will say, though, is that it seemed pretty clear to me that there are two main characters in The Sixth Gun, Drake Sinclair and Becky Moncrief. But it's being reported in the trades that Becky is the lead with not even a mention of Drake. Look, I'm all about strong female characters, but let's not go around rewriting perfectly good stories just so the ingenue of the week can unconvincingly wield a gun on a bunch of posters. Sorry, Revolution fans, but you know I'm right. Then last week, the S.H.I.E.L.D. pilot actually began shooting under the shadow, literally, of Joss Whedon. I wonder how he felt sitting on the set of a TV series as it was announced that Disney hired J.J. Abrams to take over Star Wars. Is it just one big happy family over there, or has the internal competition begun a la Pixar and Disney Animation? But aside from the players, the team captains at Disney, the Suits, are positively giddy over having a S.H.I.E.L.D. TV series for Fall 2013, already comparing it to their current big genre hit, Once Upon a Time. What? Look, Disney, I was at Bloomingdale's a few months ago when you had a Once Upon a Time event, and I saw who your legion of fans are for that show. They might think the special effects on that show are killer, but it's going to take a lot more to win over the audience that's used to watching the Marvel Universe unfold on the big screen. Speaking of special effects, it's been confirmed that this series takes place after the Avengers movie, yet Clark Gregg, a.k.a. Agent Coulson, will star. How is that possible? See, you're already going to watch the first episode. Ming-Na Wen, a.k.a. Mulan, co-stars along with these generic actors. Hey, they have to save money somewhere. Although, who else wishes they'd reached out to Summer Glau for anything? She is sadly totally available. Expect Disney to leak photos and news bits like crazy to promote the show, as they've already set up a Facebook page and Twitter account. But the downside is, is that in order to just keep posting, we get lame pics like these. Quality, not quantity shield. All this publicity also means that even though they haven't officially committed yet, there's no way ABC will pass on the show. Hey, we're talking about a studio that's making Captain America 2 just to save face. So obviously, we're all going to watch both these shows. That means my question to you is, which one do you think, if either, will actually work out? And I don't just mean making it to the network lineup, but scoring with non-comic book readers, which both shows will have to do if they want to stay alive on network television. And if I can watch The Adventures of S.H.I.E.L.D. every week on TV, does that make the movies just a little less special? Every week I get a bunch of comments that I don't recommend enough DC books. It's not personal. DC has gotten so good with gimmicks, from Zero Month to Night of the Owls to Death of the Family, that the books sell themselves. Plus, I found it's really hard to find jumping on points with their titles, which was kind of the whole point of the New 52. Anyway, this week I've got some DC recommendations for you. First up, look away, Alan Moore. We've got more before Watchmen. The dollar bill one-shot hits shelves, and while I can't really rave about Len Wein's writing, I can tell you that Steve Root's artwork alone is enough reason to pick this up. He's up there with Paulo Rivera in terms of painted visuals, and unfortunately both work so seldomly, it's like finding a four-color leaf clover when they do put out a book. 
And it's time for my favorite kind of Damian Wayne story, the ones where he does some father-son bonding with old Brucey. So if you're a Damian fan like me, be sure to pick up Batman and Robin Annual number one. Now, if you're a Doctor Who fan, then you won't want to miss the first issue of IDW's limited series, Prisoners of Time, which focuses on all the different incarnations of your favorite TARDIS occupant in honor of his 50th anniversary. And over at Dark Horse, Emily the Strange kicks off yet another limited series of her own, Emily and the Strangers. Maybe she and Marceline can go on tour together. Finally, another issue of The Sixth Gun hits shelves. Pick it up along with the back issues and trades, so when the ads start running on NBC, you'll be in the know. And that's this week's Stacktastic. I'm Grace Randall for Think About the Ink. I hope to see you back on Friday for Between the Pages. Until then, happy reading.